So we're here at Las Casitas Park, which is one of the sites where Santa Fe actually built a bunch of houses for the Mexican-American community who were working on the railroad in the 1920s. The Santa Fe had actually been having Mexican workers come and work on the railroad since like the early 1900s, I mean, even back into the 1800s. But there was a pretty significant need for housing because the railroad business was so thriving here. So they actually originally had like these long, narrow houses that had about 10 rooms that multiple families would share. There would usually be about like two to three families per house and they would each have a room for say like a living room, a room for the girls and a room for the boys. But as the railroad continued to expand, uh, there was actually this need for more housing. So they built these things called hook houses. And hook houses were actually pre-built structures that had hooks that attached the roof to the rest of the structure, hence the name hook houses. So as they continued to build these structures and continued to expand the railroad, they actually took all of the houses and moved them in the 1920s to South Arundel Street because it originally had been located in the Ruggles edition, but with the expansion of the railroad, they needed to move all of those houses. And with the houses being pre-built, you know, it was fairly easy to move them. So they moved them to South Arundel Street. Now there was a landlord who owned a vast majority of these houses. Um, his name was Sam Cravens, and he actually allowed a lot of the low-income families to live in these houses for free. I mean, rent was only like 50 cents per room or anything like that, but he would allow these people to live in these houses for free because they were so necessary for the betterment of the railroad. So that sort of created this uh, this little area in town that is now known as Las Casitas, but it was called uh, either uh, La Colonia or it was called Little Mexico. And because of racial discrimination during this time in Emporia, so you know, you're thinking like, this is all pre-1965, this is pre the civil rights movement and such. There was a lot of racial discrimination in Emporia. So like home ownership by uh, Mexican Americans was not encouraged in the rest of Emporia. So they were really confined to this area. I mean, I when my research, I actually found a uh, newspaper article from I think 1916 that talked about the fact that the police hadn't been called to La Colonia in like five months. And that was newsworthy. And the, the tone with which the Mexican American community was written about in this newspaper made it seem like they were there was constantly crime there and such. I mean, they talked about how there was like always shootings and such. So there was, you know, this this huge piece of racial discrimination that really made them create their own community. And they actually did this in a really fun way. Despite the fact that they were suffering all this racial discrimination, they actually made it their own community. They actually painted their houses like beautiful colors and such like they would have been in Mexico. They also planted their own gardens so that way they could supply their own food and such because again, you know, they don't, there was a lot of racial discrimination. They couldn't necessarily like leave the area to go to area stores and such without like facing that racial discrimination. And they also uh, even created a night school so that residents were able to get the education that they might not be able to otherwise because of language and class barriers as well as you know like the work schedules and stuff that they had to work railroad work was very very difficult and time intensive so they really didn't have time to go to school during the day these houses when they were originally built they did not have a lot of amenities to them they didn't have indoor toilets because the sanitation sewers did not extend all the way to this part of town electricity did not extend to this part of town it wasn't until the 1940s so they had been living in this area for for at least two decades, give or take, before they started getting electricity and were able to build indoor toilets and such. So this was a really thriving community area up until about the 1960s when Santa Fe eventually decided to tear down the roundhouse that they had built here. And they ended up tearing down all of the, uh, the, the little houses, the Las Casitas. But instead of just leaving this land to be empty just as a lot, there was actually land leased from Santa Fe through a couple of organizations, namely the Mexican American Cultural Awareness Club and a few other trusts here in town. They actually uh, created this park here. So it's got a bandstand, it's got a basketball court, it's got a nice playground now. They did a lot of this fundraising throughout the 70s and 80s and uh, even still today are continuing to fundraise to help create a, uh, a better park at Las Casitas. Um, so really today what Las Casitas is now is it's a place of uh, cultural history and heritage and really allows for everybody to sort of experience, you know, this is a place where they come and they learn about like the Mexican-American community in Emporia and Lytton County. 
So while I was doing research for Las Casitas, one of the problems that I was really running into is that I don't actually have a lot of information about Las Casitas uh, in the archives. Um, I know that there's a lot of oral histories, which is really neat, and that which is not something I had time to go through all of them for this because there are we have a lot of uh, oral history from the uh, Mexican American community, which is really great. But what I would really love is I would love to have like more pictures or maybe more documents like deeds or leases or something like that from Las Casitas, um, as well as like any other may maybe like physical artifacts, like if somebody has like a brick or something from one of the houses or such, that would be really, really neat to have. So if anybody has any artifacts or anything that they'd like to donate regarding Las Casitas, uh, please contact the Lyon County History Center. We'd love to talk to you and uh, get some more history so that we can better tell the story of the Mexican-American community in Emporia and Lyon County.